These are the hands of men and women at work in the Dayton area. These are their stories, stories of enterprise. Enterprise, brought to you by Siebenthalers, serving the community for 117 years and still growing. And now here is your host on Enterprise, Mr. Glenn Walters. Thank you for inviting us into your home with our stories of enterprise. Well, it's been said that we live in the age of information. But if you're anything like I am, then sometimes having too much information available is as bad as not having enough. Imagine, for example, walking into a public library, knowing what sort of information you want, but not where to find it, and having the book that holds it open to the page you need lying on the table in front of you. In 1967, a Dayton company recognized that problem and began to build a new technology to solve it. The technology is called computer-assisted information management. The company that pioneered the technology is Mead Data Central, a subsidiary of Mead Corporation. They built a computer system with the ability not only to store massive amounts of information, but to search through it and retrieve on command only the pieces that are requested. And with us as a guest in our studio today is the president of Mead Data Central, Mr. Jack Simpson. Jack, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Good. Um, well, we told a little bit about this venture that started roughly 20 years ago. How in particular did it get started? Well, it was an acquisition that was accomplished by Jim McSweeney, who was the chairman of Mead. In 1969, they purchased an outfit called Data Corporation, which had some inkjet technology as well as some data retrieval technology. Lexus, which is the major product we have today, was really begun in 1973, became profitable in 77, and we've added on products since then. Certainly, really, still a young company. Very much so. Uh, from that first uh, handful of employees, I'm sure, in those days, uh, how many employees do you have now? We have about 1,800 employees. There's about 1,300 of those in Dayton, Ohio, and 500 across the U.S., a few in Toronto, a few in London. Uh, and, of course, again, as a new business, uh, 20 years or so ago, uh, probably just a handful of customers. What has that grown into now? Well, the customer said is the amazing thing. Uh, we have trained about 300,000 users on how to use information. Each year, we have about 200,000 of those people that actively do a project. We have uh, 10,000 of those every month. And uh, it's just amazing at uh, the number and types of activities that they can get answers to in our system today. That's a, that's a good point. Besides uh, attorneys, and doctors <clears throat> and research scientists. What other kinds of uh, users might you have? Well, there's lots of government officials, uh, a lot of folks in the media, uh, large corporations, uh, public relations operations, uh, financial institutions, banks. Anybody that needs information in their business is a potential customer for us. Uh, how does the customer go about actually accessing your system? Well, typically they would access it through a personal computer or a terminal or one of our own terminals. And they essentially sign on and in plain English ask questions and we pull out the needles in the haystack for them out of our mega library and give them an answer on their own uh, screen or even print it out on their own printer. Hmm. I have another question, but I want to share something with our viewers for a moment. Just a couple of months ago, uh, Jack had what I would certainly term an unnerving experience. One day, a couple of uh, people came into his office as representatives of the Department of Defense and asked or tried to require that he give them the names of all of his customers. What was that all about? Well, over the last year, we had the FBI, the CIA, and the folks you mentioned. Uh, it started with a directive signed by President Reagan in 1984, which uh, gave some very broad powers of protecting information to the Department of Defense and the uh, uh, intelligence community. What they were really looking for were if we had any Soviet customers, uh, uh, unfriendly uh, uh, countries that might be accessing information. They wanted to know the kinds of things that they were searching for in order to understand if we were really losing information that way. Uh, as it turns out, all of our information is unclassified, so we 
uh, don't have anything that really should be of interest to the Department of Defense. And in fact, we thought they were stepping over the line into what we all see as the First Amendment, the freedom of speech. So we refused to give them any information while still supporting their basic ideal because we care about national security. Uh, since that time, uh, the directive has been uh, rescinded. Part of it has been rescinded. Uh, Jack Brooks, uh, the Democratic uh, congressman from Texas, is leading a charge to really debate this tough issue. And uh, we're obviously going to do whatever comes out of that. But we feel much better now realizing that we're looking at both sides of this tough question. So we do see some hope for a reasonable resolution. We this. think so. Mm -hmm. There's been some retrenchment. Uh, unfortunately, as you've watched the news, uh, and this will continue for some time, we've had a number of issues with information leaks. Uh, through contractors, through our embassies, and we really believe that's where they'll put their emphasis for the near term. Good. Moving to more pleasant subject. Yes. <laughs> you certainly have a beautiful facility already down there on uh, Springboro Pike. Uh, obviously, it is still under construction. How large is it going to be when it's all finished? When our fourth building is completed, we will have uh, 450,000 feet, uh, square feet of uh, space on about 75 acres. And uh, one of the buildings there has about one and a quarter acres of computers and disk drives and that kind of thing, which is really amazing. Mm. This is certainly uh, a deep commitment uh, to uh, the Dayton area community. Uh, you obviously feel satisfied doing business here in Dayton. We enjoy it for several reasons. The work ethic here is very strong. The telecommunications facilities offered by Ohio Bell are, are uh, also very powerful. Uh, we've been able to recruit a lot of folks from around the U.S., particularly from the Midwest, uh, into this area. The educational system is strong. Uh, Dayton is becoming more and more exciting. We also have access to Cincinnati. It is a great place to raise a family. And we travel quite easily to New York or D.C. or Atlanta or Chicago from this, uh, this location. So it's turned out to be a really uh, good strategic choice for us, and uh, we expect more growth here. Good. That's good news to everybody in the community. Um, well, finally, what do you see looking ahead for the future, for your company, for your industry? Well, the, uh, the industry, while we've talked about it uh, being uh, 18 or 20 years old, uh, it's just really beginning to take off because the information explosion is continuing. Uh, new technology is coming down in price to give us more capability of managing this information. The international markets are starting to open up. We are getting more experience about the products that people like and how to deliver those in better and better ways. So for us, uh, for Media Data Central, we see a strong future and we see this industry continuing to grow. And our desire is to be in the middle of this uh, great business, to be one of the leaders where we are today, and to uh, help Dayton grow as uh, perhaps the center of electronic information. Good. Thank you very much for being our guest. and. Uh, helping us in tell this story of new technologies and new things coming down the road here in Dayton. Thank you for letting me be here today and sharing this with you. We'll be back in a moment. Siebenthalers, your source for a complete range of landscaping needs. We have the experience, the design capability, and 500 acres of nursery stock to accommodate the most discriminating needs. From the smallest residential to the largest commercial design, call Siebenthalers, serving the community for 117 years and still growing. What do you look for in your business graphics? Versatility? At the graphics terminal, we've got it. Color? We have an unlimited palette and color on top of color at no extra charge. Quality, the graphics terminal delivers 4,000 line resolution. Updates or changes, your new slide is just keystrokes away. Ability to meet deadlines, we offer one day service. We're the graphics terminal, the answer to your graphics needs. Last month on Enterprise, we brought you the story of unmanned vehicle systems as they are used generally throughout American business and government. 